Every time we order an MRI to one of our patients, three questions should pop up in our minds. First, can our patients safely undergo an MRI? Second, can our patients handle the MRI environment? Here I mean, can my patient stay still for the duration of the exam, which ranges from 10 to 30 minutes in most cases? And is my patient claustrophobic or not and need to plan for that? And third question, is IV contrast required? And if required, are there contraindications to give contrast or not? Today we will discuss the first two questions, the MRI safety and MRI environment. We'll discuss when IV contrast required next video. Before we start, remember to tap that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you can see our videos as soon as they are released. Let's start. Let's first review the most widely used MRI machines in clinical practice today. First, close the MRI. These are the traditional ones, the most commonly available one with a cylindrical tube. These are further divided into regular bore diameter of 60 centimeters and wide bore diameters of 70 centimeters, which can fit larger and more obese people. Keep in mind that the bigger the diameter, the less detailed the picture. Second, open MRI. These are open and lack that cylindrical tube which can be ideal for claustrophobic patients and morbidly obese patients who cannot fit in the closed MRI. The quality of images though are less compared to closed MRI. And third extremity MRI as you see here in the picture only the extremity goes into the machine. So make sure to know what MRI machines your facilities carries. Let's get you familiar with how MRI rooms are designed. MRI rooms divided into zones. Zone 1 is the general public out in the world. There is no magnetic field in this zone. The whole hospital is considered zone 1 as long as you are outside zone 2. That's why you will not see any sign saying zone 1 real life. Zone 2 is the screening area. No magnetic fields yet. Here our patients undergo a thorough screening process to make certain there are no clinical risks. For example, to make certain that you don't have certain devices on or within you and no physical risks such as carrying, for example, a pocket knife. And that's before you are permitted to get closer to the magnet room. And zone three, which is the area around the magnet room, there is a potential of a magnetic field in this zone. And that's why there is usually a locked door between zone two and zone three. And finally, of course, zone four, which is the magnetic room itself, where the physical risks are at their greatest. Because the strong magnetic field zone 4 has, it's very important to perform a thorough screening process to avoid any potential harm if any magnetic objects inside or outside body is present. Device malfunction, dislodge, and skin burns are all possible complications. Fortunately for us, the screening process usually performed by the patient's nurse initially on the floor, then again by MRI personnel in zone 2. This is a sample of the MRI screening questionnaire that usually done every time a patient goes for an MRI. Now, if there is any uncertainty about MRI safety and compatibility of a device or an object, we can easily check its safety, its MRI safety online at multiple websites, mainly mrisafety.com, which is a reliable one, or we can look at the manufacturer instructions regarding MRI compatibility. Let's go over some of the situations you or me, we may encounter in real life practice where maybe you are thinking about ordering an MRI. First, don't order MRI for a critically ill and unstable patients for the following reasons. MRI exams needs at least 10 minutes and most likely longer. This patient, the critically ill, needs to be in ICU, not in the MRI room. These patients likely require a lot of infusions with infusion pumps. Logistically, that will be very challenging to move them from ICU into these MRI rooms. Also, these infusion pumps have to be MRI compatible as well. Also, these patients usually re usually require mechanical ventilation and ventilators themselves need to be MRI compatible as well. And most of MRI rooms
people not equipped to have these critically ill patients space wise and equipment wise now if imaging is absolutely necessary for critically ill patients ct should be ordered instead given the risk of nephrogenic systemic sclerosis patient with end stage renal disease on dialysis acute kidney injury or ckd with gfr less than 30 should not undergo a contrast mri non-contrast mri is okay to do if contrast mri must be done and no other alternatives nephrology and radiology should be involved and we should follow their recommendation in such case non-contrast mri can be safely performed in pregnancy if necessary avoid contrast mri unless it's absolutely necessary and i highly recommend to consult with radiology and OBGYN and get their input before giving contrast to pregnant ladies most mri rooms have the capabilities to provide oxygen supplements and the ability to monitor vital signs if needed so patients who are on few liters of oxygen and cannot bring their own cylinders because they are not mri compatible can use this oxygen supply this will not be adequate for mechanical ventilation morbidly obese people likely will not fit in the closed mri machines open mri would be the next option remember the quality of images of open mri is less compared to traditional closed mri icd and pacemakers these devices used to be mri unsafe or and incompatible nowadays a lot of these devices can be reprogrammed to become mri safe and compatible and once the procedure is done the device can be reprogrammed back to its original setting the patient's cardiologist or the manufacturer representative will be the best one to tell you if the device has this capability or not Foley's catheters regular peripheral ivs and temporary central venous catheters are all considered mri safe most metallic orthopedic hardware are mri safe but some need certain mri settings mri personnel usually will be able to figure that out but in case we get asked about find the type and model number of these hardware then check them online as we just mentioned Arterial stents, including coronary stents, arterial grafts, and coils are considered MRI safe eight weeks after placement. The same applies to biliary stents and surgical skin staples. MRI is contraindicated if any bullet fragments and shrapnels lie too close to vital structures like eyes and, and artery. If any suspicion, verify the presence and location of these bullets and shrapnel with CT first before proceeding with MRI. For the following list of devices, it's important to get their brand and model number to check their MRI compatibility. Inferior vena cava filters, intracranial and aneurysm clips, CSF shunts, cochlear implants, neurostimulators, intrauterine device, and penile prosthesis. Now, what to do if your patient is claustrophobic? Inpatient MRI usually needs to be done within hours or next day, which means non-medication approach like psychotherapy and positional adjustments may not be feasible for inpatient MRI unlike outpatient MRI where you can plan weeks ahead. That means claustrophobic patients will likely need to be pre-medicated with an anxiolytic. If an extremity need to be imaged with an MRI and your facility has an extremity MRI machine then no need to go through the closed MRI and patient likely will not need to be pre-medicated and that will solve the problem. If another part of the body needs to be imaged then proceed with pre-medications because you will need to go through the closed MRI. Consider open MRI if your facility has it. Only if severe claustrophobia and patient is totally refusing closed MRI even if pre-medicated. Remember the quality of images produced in open MRI are not as good as closed MRI. Now let's talk about pre-medications. Basically, this means giving an anxiolytic prior to MRI, whether orally or intravenously. Oral forms, of course, are preferred and should be given 30 to 60 minutes prior to MRI. Intravenous and intranasal benzodiazepine are administered 5 to 15 minutes prior to the procedure. In clinical practice, of course, as we mentioned, we prefer oral forms if patient can take PO. The most commonly used oral benzodiazepine in clinical practice are 5 to 10 milligram of oral diazepam or 1 to 2 milligram of oral lorazepam or 0.5 milligram of alprazolam or 15 to 30 milligram of temazepam. Remember to give them 30 to 60 minutes prior to the procedure. 
On the other hand, the most commonly used IV benzodiazepines are 5 to 10 mg of IV diazepam, 2 to 4 mg of IV lorazepam, 1 to 2 mg of IV midazolam. Remember, IV form should be given 5 to 15 minutes prior to the procedure. Usually, we give the lower recommended dose in elderly or small adult patients. Use the upper limit dose for people who use benzodiazepine chronically. Be prepared to give more if needed. If pre-medication provided, then patient's nurse should accompany the patient during the exam to help with monitoring. Remember that MRI rooms are equipped with MRI compatible oxygen supply and vital signs monitoring if needed. Now for patients who cannot stay still, pre-medication likely will be required. In confused patients, it's preferred to defer the MRI until they improve and the underlying problem of their confusion is treated. If the MRI has to be done and cannot wait, then proceed with pre-medication as we just explained. For those patients who are annoyed by the ringing sounds of the MRI, a compatible noise cancelling headphones can be provided by the MRI personnel. Next video will discuss how to decide if contrast MRI required or not and will provide you also with some real life clinical scenarios. If you found this video useful make sure to like it and share it with your colleagues. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.